So if you haven't watched the first four videos of season six, you're probably thinking, what does physical training, exercise, physical health have to do with the Christian faith? And if you're thinking that, well, you probably haven't been reading much of your Bible. Hebrews says, therefore strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. <laughs> now, but seriously, let's talk about why exercise is important, why improving our physical health is important and how it relates to the spiritual health. So I'm not saying everyone has to get aesthetic physiques. Don't worry, um, because let's face it, not everybody cares about that. I know there's quite a few people who care about uh, like looking good and feeling good, um, but I'd say like there's a minority uh, for those who actually go at lengths to build aesthetic physiques. Um, this video is more to help those who don't really think about physical health at all, or those who do, but they have like uh, time constraints and motivational environmental constraints that prevent them from actually training. Um, I will also cover uh, why exercise is important for Christians in particular. Look, you probably see exercise as just lifting a bunch of weights and transforming into silverback gorilla, and you just don't care for it. You know, you know about resistance training and how it benefits your muscle and bone health so that you can reduce a bunch of chronic health conditions, but you just don't care. You know about exercise and how it relates to mental health, right? Reducing stress, improving mood, focus, uh, making you feel good, but it just doesn't feel like tangible, these, these benefits. It doesn't feel relevant to what you do and what you care about right now. You're wondering, why does it matter to me? And you probably, you'd rather just sit on your toilet watching a YouTube video while eating a donut. Look, you have to understand that physical training starts with why. Without a why, you're just gonna fall off. And sustainability and consistency is the key. Studies show that adherence to a diet is more important than which diet you choose. And if you don't like the diet, it's gonna be harder to adhere to. And so you can train every day for like hours every single day. But for most people, in the long run, it's not gonna be sustainable. So we have to ask the question, what can we do so we can be active for years? First, you have to find ways to be active that you actually enjoy. If you don't like working out at the gym or using weights, go home, use your body weight, go outside. But even so, you probably don't see exercise as like something that's that important, right? And so let's bring it back to the why. The why is what you actually care about in life. Find a why, find a purpose, and then let's use physical activity, exercise, as a tool to be able to do that thing that you actually care about. So let's shift our perspective here. Let's not see health and wellness as just fitness. Exercise can go far beyond the gym environment. It's about quality of life. So like, what's important to you? On this channel, we talk about faith, right? So as servants of Christ, should not our spiritual health be at the center of our life? Like, at least it should be, right? I mean, it better not be, I don't know, like gaming or something, social media, human validation, money, success, sex. <laughs> so let's start seeing exercise as a tool to improve our quality of life so we can better do the things that God wants us to do. So do you see how exercise can now have benefits beyond just lifting heavier? Because you probably don't care about lifting heavier. You care about your faith, right? You probably care about like serving better. You want to care for your friends, your family. You want to overcome certain sins. And should we not take care of the body that God has given us? So let's redefine fitness and exercise. Movement should matter. When we realize that exercise, its benefits overlap with our spiritual health. In this video, I'm not here to give you an exercise program or tell you which exercises to do. I just want to focus on movement features because it's not just that movement matters, but it's how we move that determines how much transfer we can get to other parts of our life, particularly our faith. You have to realize that most injuries do not occur in one-time events. Most injuries occur due to buildup of damage over time. Our tissues degrade due to poor movement. Bad habits lead to ingrained, undesirable features. And so bad movement habits can cause a lot of damage over time. Many people say, oh, my back's hurting, my knee's hurting, must be my age. When in fact, it might be because they've been moving poorly for many years, causing a lot of buildup of damage over time. Falls are one of the highest leading causes of injury-related deaths for the elderly, right? Studies have shown that falls are due to poor bone health, weak muscles, and poor balance. Thus, falls which are seen as one-time events can actually be due to like, insufficient training and poor movement habits across the lifespan. So we need to be proactive with this and know what to do. There are three main key features that you need to keep in mind when you move. Just remember these three key features and you'll start to build proper, healthy, and safe movement habits. Three features 
are the low back, the knees, and the shoulders. Basically, keep your lower back nice and straight in its neutral position. Keep your knees in line with your ankles and your hips, and then keep your shoulders down and back. Let's look at two squats. First, we have a squat that doesn't take into account the key features. Notice how the back is rounded and bent, and the knees are going inward, and the shoulders are a bit shrugged. Now look at this second squat. The back has a normal curvature, nice and straight. The knees are now in line with the ankles and hips, and the shoulders are in their normal resting position. With just these three key features in mind, we can develop the right movement habits for a healthier physical body. Now, before I end the video, I just wanted to address one last thing. How can we overcome some common barriers to physical activity? Because I know you're busy with school, with work. You don't have time to train every day for like an hour, but somehow you have time to like watch YouTube videos and scroll mindlessly on your phone. <laughs> Look, maybe some of you don't exercise at all and you haven't a clue of where to start. First off, I just wanna say that training an hour each day, you don't have to do that, right? It's, of course, it's optimal, but we don't always have the time to do that. And maybe you're doing your walks. Maybe you're doing some chores around the house. And so that counts as physical activity. And so just remember that any exercise at all is better than none. A five to 10 minute workout can be very beneficial if you know what you're doing. So I just made a five minute bodyweight workout that you can do every single day anywhere it can be adapted to any level and it takes no time at all so check it out but that's it for me just remember if anyone that knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it it's sin for them so please kill the flesh